Okay. So, greetings everyone. I am going to uh, be showing you how to use uh, an Epson scanner to scan slides using their open source software called iScan. Now, normally I be thorough and show you the install process, but let's just say um, with some peculiarities of this particular scanner that I have, it took me two days to finally get the driver appropriately installed, and uh, it was kind of a backwards way and probably not the cleanest. So, let's get started. I have a slide in there that is ready to be scanned. Uh, so all I have to do is open the iScan tool, which normally it should be, once you installed it correctly, it should be under graphics and it should be somewhere around here. I have this that I manually made, but I stopped working for some ungodly reason, and I don't know why. So, I scan, and boom, there we go. So this is the eye scan tool, which is kind of cheeky with a little penguin here, and its face all squished up on the machine. So. When you've got this software, you have the option of either doing a regular normal flatbed scan, or you've got the option of scanning a negative, or you have the option of scanning a slide. Now, the slide is an interesting thing because you're actually supposed to have the slide in a particular orientation. Uh, portrait, I believe, is the orientation that it wants you to do. The problem with that is if you've got slides that are done in the normal landscape mode, in this particular tool there really isn't anything for flipping it and it's just a pain in the ass to flip them all. That and I'll show you a, neat, a little weird thing with the software. So, going to go to positive because it is a, um, a slide that we're scanning, not negatives. It is a color photo. There are other options as well, black and white photo. If you want to uh, scan a slide of Vin Stone from LGC, shout out to LGC every Wednesday and Saturday they have a show that they do, a new show and a gaming show. So, just a shout out to them. But, again, this is going to be color. Uh, and here you can change the DPI. Now, uh, government now archive quality standards requ uh, requires you to scan things at 600 DPI. I mean, that, that is the, bear, the the standard in the industry uh, from when I was working and doing uh, archiving of documents, videos, movies, slides, negatives, beta, uh, and all sorts of other things. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go a bit overkill because with this particular photo, I'm going to do 3200 DPI just because why not? You could knock that down, but meh. So, now that we've got that set, we kind of really want to see what the slide looks like. Uh, do I have it in the correct orientation? Is it facing the correct way? I've, who knows with these scanners, if you put the slide in in the correct orientation. The little logos on this particular scanner, which is an Epson Perfection 3590. So, oh yeah, it's up here. Now, I'd probably recommend the 3490 over the one that I have. It does 
more slides. The driver is available <laughs> by default, so you can actually use the current up-to-date eye scan. This is 2.10. The current stable open source version is 2.30. So uh, for some reason I couldn't use that, nor could I use a 64-bit because the driver for this particular machine is only available in 32-bit. So to get us a copy of the slide, you hit preview, you wait, it makes some noise, as you can probably hear. And while it's doing that, uh, I, I've been through at least three different slide, scan, slide scanners for Linux. Uh, a, one of them is some weird knockoff. I think there was an, actually four. There was a Microtech as well that I used. Uh, the Microtech I used long ago, and it did work. And it did work with X same. But recently I tried a weird no-name brand that I don't know of off the top of my head. An HP G... G... What, what is it? Uh, G4050. And it worked. He hoped the drivers are open source. Ah, there we go. And this is why you do a preview. Because as you can see, everything is backwards. So, that means I need to go lift the lid, flip the slide over, and do this all over again. So, I tried the G4050 and it wouldn't turn on the backlight. It scanned. It was miraculously awesome for scanning, especially flat documents. But it would not turn on the backlight so that you could see through to the scan. And it annoyed the hell out of me. In this one, I think I'm going to have to change the scale a little bit. Because it's cut cropping off on the corner. Normally on a, some of the slides that I've been doing, that wouldn't be a big enough of an issue. Let's see, did this work a little? Nope. Let's try that again. So yeah, they had issues with the G4050 doing slides. It's still cutting it off, isn't it? Huh. Oh well. I did the best I could. Now, he, going back to this, there's some interesting things that you can do. You can actually adjust uh, gamma. The highlight. And the shadow. So I'm going to hit back auto exposure. So there's some interesting things that you can do. And, well, since I'm done fiddling with these controls, 
Here, as you can see, you can change the RGB and the grayscale, shadow, highlight, gamma, all within this particular program. So I'm going to hit scan. Now, here's one of the most backwards things that I found with this particular program is usually, okay, yeah, you want to save it as a PNM, fine. Want to save it as a, in this case, I can't save it as a PNG or a TIFF. So, JPEG, okay. Nope, not allowing me. So, it, it, it forces that end extension on everything. And so you can see I've scanned a few things already, and there's this particular video right now. So, World Savings Bank. Up. Savings Bank. Okay, and now it's going to do one final scan before it saves it. Now, one of the interesting things about this particular tool, the image scan or eye scan, is it's actually a plugin for GIMP. So, yeah. Okay. I might as well just stop doing that and go to. So, if you go to help, plugin browser, type in I scan, lo and behold, there it is. So, Image filters. Acquire image. Scanning eye scan. There we go. So that one. That I'll show that in just a bit. But yeah, with the G forty fifty, the backlight would not turn on no matter what I could try and do. So I may end up having to re, uh, do a bug report because the G4050 is not an old scanner. It's relatively newish. The Epson that I have is about three or four generations old at this point. But hey, it works and it's got open source software. I, God bless Epson and HP for providing open source software. Yeah, H-P-L-I-P -P is stupidly useful. The only reason why it's taking this long to scan is because of the high DPI. It's going to be a relatively high resolution photo or scan. Funny thing about this picture is this is actually a professionally done picture. It's not one taken by my parents. It's This is an actual professionally done stock image. <laughs> and interestingly enough, this bank uh, was a very, very popular Cal Southern California bank 
and they ended up getting bought out by Wachovia, and then as the financial bubble, uh, the housing bubble burst, uh, in part by banks like World Savings and Home Savings of America and uh, Washington Mutual and the like, uh, World Savings and got bought out by Wachovia, and Wachovia ended up getting bought out by Wells Fargo. Okay, so that's scanned. Close that. Let's see if we can... Yay! More reasons for me to report more bugs. Yay. Fucking awesome. Uh, okay, so... How about I just open that picture? Open. There we go. Let's see what I can do to try and repair this. Auto white balance. Auto color enhance. see much of a difference there. Control Z Z. Let's try normalizing it. see anything there. Control Z. Oh. Stupid mouse, damn it. Whoa. Like, nope. Let's There we go. Now we should be able to go into auto and equalize. There we go. Now it looks like a normal building. Awesome. Look at the uh, the color on the brickwork, which is m for Southern California building. It should be more of a sandy color, maybe a little bit red. The sky is a little bit more pronounced here. The speckling, though, is a bit... Let's see, what else is... Is there anything that... speckle. Let's see if that will work. Thank <laughs> you. 
Let's see if that works. I didn't really do anything, so it probably won't, so... See. Hmm, well that sure as heck isn't going to work. a lot better than it did. So, I'm gonna save it. And in GIMP you have to export. And export it as is. Hit replace. And because I'm anal for quality, 100% all the things. If I could 110% it, I would. Okay, so let's close this and see if I can find another slide to scan. Maybe something of interest. something. Let's see. So yeah, I, I, this is really, really neat, at least having something that works. Especially with uh, people like my parents that have hundreds upon hundreds of slides. We go back into iScan. There we go. I'm going to do true for positive. 200 dpi. Cropped off. Uh, this one's kind of important, so I guess I'll have to rotate it. Uh, 
this program does do a pretty decent job in dealing with auto exposure and whatnot. I've had some programs like, uh, or some scanners like the Microtech that it was, was just stupid. Oh my god, it was stupid. Yep, that is a very, very interesting photograph. Probably has no significance to any of you, but to me, yeah. I didn't exist at that time. Okay. Scan. And I'm not going to use GIMP to rotate it. Why well, use something big and incredibly photoshoppy as GIMP? GIMP's really good for at least photo repairs and mucking around with uh, ones that need to be auto-exposed, uh, that need despeckling, and th th things like that. I was going to be doing some work for a client of mine, helping his family scan a bunch of slides. I ended up uh, just with the deluge of how many slides and negatives that they had. They ended up uh, giving up on that project. It was just way too much and a lot of the stuff that, a lot of the slides that they had and the pictures that they had, the people that would know the most about them are no longer uh, on the celestial plane, so they had nothing more than archival meaning, no family meeting, no things like that. There might be maybe a few that might mean something, but they're just to go through all of them just wasn't worth it for them. Costco charges, I think, $35 up front, and then... No, no, it was uh, it, a little less. It's almost like 20 bucks or so, and then $0.35 cents per slide after that. 35 or 32 Normally, I, with something like this, I'd charge $20 an hour and a dollar fifty per slide. I used to do this as a living through the federal government uh, archiving uh, various media documents, either sending them out to get scanned by someone else, or doing them in-house, putting them in a searchable database, creating metadata for stuff that didn't have metadata, and well, around the tail end was when I was uh, charged with getting stuff ready and prepared to send to the National Archive. Things like uh, the 1976 Platform A oil spill, I think it was A. Also dealt with uh, Freedom of Information Act requests as well. Helping my boss and uh, some of the other people in the office, supervisors and peers, uh, scanning, printing, 
collating and getting documents set up to uh, fulfill the Freedom of Information Act requests. Scanning logs was another one. Yeah, we had a lot of logs. Okay, yay. That should be done. So what I'm going to be doing here is using GwynView, one of my favorite photo viewers for on Linux. Because this is also, it's kind of like Infran View on Windows, or the very, very old uh, Microsoft Picture Viewer. This one does animated GIFs, and I've got lots of them. So here, I'm going to... Rotate it to the right. Should be correct. Blam! There we go. Now, the other th neat thing is, if you click down here, if you have this sidebar open, if you click Operations, you get a bit more. Like, simple red eye reduction if you need to resize it because you've got an aunt who lives in the back hills of Oregon and her internet connection is either dial-up or capped uh, satellite or if you need to send a picture to some friend in Tanzania or something who's on 3G might be nice to at least make the image a little smaller so you can resize there in this case I want to get rid of all of this or at least a majority of this black which is actually white let's move that over there bring this down, it's probably not flush I don't like losing any part of what I'm scanning so if I have some overflow then yeah fine deal with it if it's not a perfect image you're gonna have something but having something is better than getting rid of something that's useful so having the black here is more valuable than cropping some of the just a little bit of the sky out so once that's done, you go down here, hit crop, there we go, hit save, done, and that's it. So thank you for watching, I greatly appreciate it.